In today's episode of Automation Unleashed, I'm gonna show you how to automate invoices and checkout pages in high level. So check this out. Once we're in the automation section, we're specifically gonna jump into the folder Z04 invoicing and checkout pages in go high level. And basically we're gonna look at the process before an invoice is, is paid or when it is sent, and then after it is paid and when an invoice is paid. <laughs> so let's jump into the first automation and workflow right here, because that's mainly what I wanna focus on. How can we automate uh, this process with workflows? Because once you're in the payments tab, I think that it's not too hard to go ahead into invoices, create a new invoice and templatize it and personalize it the way you want. Same with payment links, products, all that good stuff. So for this video, I really wanted to focus on what kind of workflows and automations can we build around it and give you good examples of what a good workflow would look like for invoices and payments. So the trigger up here is again, once an invoice is sent, so we would go in and create invoice, uh, invoice status is sent. And then we would wait, we would give it a solid little wait. This could be 0.1 minutes, it could be 0.3 minutes. Uh, we'll basically just wait a couple of seconds and we'll go ahead and add a system note. So these little notes, this one specifically is saying just an invoice was sent to the contact name. Here's the link to the invoice with the invoice URL, the due date, the amount due and the sent by. And so these custom fields or custom values, you get them with this little tag here. And it's always good when you're working on something new to see what kind of custom fields, custom values exist and what can I use. So you've got this folder down here called invoice. And once we go in here, we can see all of the custom fields. I think this is a custom field and not a custom value. So I'm gonna call it custom fields uh, because it's specific to the contact and not specific to the account. And um, basically here, uh, once you scroll down, you can see the different custom fields that you have available and you might wanna use them in your specific scenario and your specific workflows. For mine and adding this note, I've added these right here. And these little notes, they show up on the contact. So once you go into the contacts and you sp uh, click on a specific contact, you'll um, get this section over here on the right with notes. So this, workflow automation right here will basically create a note similar to this one right here. It'll say when was it added, by who was it added, and you could delete it or edit it and change it up. But it's pretty cool that you can do that within the automation. And it's another way to store data because a lot of people store a lot of data in high level with tags and they overuse tags in my opinion. And they should be using notes a lot more because you can see that they just show up uh, very nicely uh, chronologically with a lot more data than a tag would. And so I highly recommend using notes uh, in many workflows. So once you've added that, we'll go ahead and hit cancel here. We'll add the tag invoice sent and we'll send an internal app notification. So this will show up on the lead connector high level app on your mobile phone. And we'll say, hey, the uh, contact, yeah, the, the contact, Joe, Steven has sent an invoice or has been sent an invoice and they're due the this amount and they're due that amount on this date. So the due amount and the due date. And we'll also, we can also send that, SM, uh, that notification via SMS as well with a little bit more data, like the total price and um, yeah, I guess who it was sent by. But if you don't want to have certain of these automations, you obviously don't have to have these action steps. So you can always delete, copy, move these action steps as you like. But that pretty much happens immediately. Then we'll wait seven days before the due date. So it's uh, wait seven days. The wait for is overdue here. And we'll skip. We'll, this is an important little, little setting to have on. Skip all outbound communication actions till the next wait or event start date action because pretty much what we're doing here now is we're sending reminders we're going to send uh, sms and email reminders one we're going to wait we're going to send sms and email reminders two we're going to wait we're going to send sms email reminders number three and so obviously it once they pay and and depending on when they receive the invoice, some people might receive this invoice a day before it's due. Some people might receive it a month before it's due. So depending on that due date, we don't want to send all reminders, one, two, three, four, all at once. We only want to send the ones that are needed. 
And by having this little toggle on down here, it'll skip all outbound communication steps until the next wait step. So if it's, let's say six days before, they're just gonna skip seven days and these action steps right here, and they'll wait here until two days before. So let's have a look. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just comment the questions down below. And I always, I'm a big fan. My, my motto within high level is go fast and break shit. So let's go fast. Let's test it out. Let's build, let's do, do, do. And um, yeah, let's stop overthinking. Let's, let's just take action. So then after, once that wait step is, is uh, yeah, seven days before, we'll receive this SMS saying, hey, uh, Jeff, your invoice from our business name, Johnny's HVAC, is due soon. We're excited to start working with you. Please complete the payment to continue. Here's a link to the invoice and we'll send them the invoice URL. So every time you create an invoice here within this invoice section, you can populate this field invoice URL and I'll just send it immediately. So that's pretty cool, the due date and the amount that's due. And we'll send a similar email uh, with similar information right here. So if you want to pause the video, you can check out the specific wording for this email invoice right here as well, but pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We've got the, uh, the, the name, the from name, the from email with custom values, the subject line, uh, pay your bills, please, pretty much. And then we'll wait two days before, again, before two days, skip all outbound communication. We're making sure that it's overdue on the invoice. And then we'll send another reminder uh, saying like, hey, your invoice is due in two days. We're excited to work with you. Please pay it here. Same with the email. And again, I, I don't want to go too deep into the wording of this. If you ever want to change any of this wording, you know, just go ahead, switch it up. You can use AI to change it up a little bit as well, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So if you're sending somebody an invoice, hopefully you've had some sort of sales call and they've agreed to it and you're not having to do too much convincing. So definitely personalize this uh, wording to you and your niche, your business. But pretty much after that, uh, the second reminder via email and SMS, we're going to wait eight hours before it's due. And I think this is, yeah, this is the first, uh, the final reminder before it's due. So we're going to send this SMS reminder being like, hey, pay me my monies. This is your final reminder. And the same here, pay me my monies. I want my money. <laughs> so that is uh, before it's due. And then we're going to wait one day after after it's overdue one day, we're still gonna have this toggle on. It's just a smart toggle on to have on, on most wait steps. And then we're gonna send an internal notification that, hey, this contact uh, with this contact name has still not paid one day after, and we're gonna send this SMS right here as well. And these are internal to, to the team, internal team to yourself, not external to the client. And so that's pretty much it. That's, that's a very solid kind of nurture reminder workflow to pay uh, the invoice. And in the settings, we'll want to have a allow re-entry on in case the contact is a, a second, third client, whatever, or they've, you know, canceled. And like, we want to have a allow re-entry on so they can go through multiple times and we don't want to have stop on response on. And you might be wondering like, hey, once they receive SMS two, three, four, uh, and they do pay, when are they removed from this workflow? And that's exactly what we're gonna look at now. We're gonna go into the second workflow here, when an invoice is paid. Because yes, this is that first one that we just looked at, it was pretty much a nurture, and we don't wanna nurture them or continue nurturing them once they receive, um, once we receive the payment. So that's exactly what the second workflow does. The trigger up here is invoice status is paid. And then pretty much we'll wait again a little bit, 30 seconds, and we'll remove them from that first one when an invoice is sent so they don't receive the nurture. If you have any other nurture automations, like a long-term SMS nurture, it might be smart to remove them from that as well because they've paid, they're a client. We don't have to send them any marketing, cold email, cold SMS stuff. So we're removing them from the long-term SMS nurture. We're removing them from the long-term email nurture as well. And we'll have a look at the abandoned cart checkout at the end of this video. Um, so stay tuned for that because that's a huge 
area where many people, they have these payment pages and once somebody opts in, they don't actually do a long-term abandoned cart, checkout, nurture. And so that's uh, what we'll have a look at at the end of this. And if they, if you have that, you definitely, definitely want to remove them from that as well. So that's what we're doing here. We're adding a similar system note saying, hey, the invoice has been paid from that contact with this invoice data. And then this is up to you what kind of pipeline stages you have in your funnel, in your, in your, in your business. But pretty much in, in my snapshot, in my automations, we're going to put them into the sold stage and we're going to trigger actions from there as well. We're going to say, hey, now that you've been sold, let's, let's take certain actions pretty much. And again, this is optional. You could request a review from them and say add the request review tag and say, hey, now that you're a customer, leave me a review. Depending on your niche and your industry, your business, you might wanna do this immediately, like we're doing it here, or you might wanna wait a week, a month, whatever time frame you might wanna wait. So this is a step that you can change and adjust as you like, or just completely delete. And we'll remove, in the first workflow, we added the tag invoice sent, and this is also personalized, um, automation workflow building if you want to keep the tag invoice sent on every contact you can but like obviously the invoice was sent but it could also be smart to just remove that tag because we pretty much added the tag invoice paid up here and so now we're just going to remove the tag invoice sent and then we can also send ourselves internal app and sms notification and again if you just want one of these just go ahead and delete uh, pretty much the other one, but we want to get, we want to get notified. Like it's a good feeling to get paid and uh, it's cool to be out on a Sunday or at night, whenever, whenever you're out <laughs> and get a notification like, Hey, an invoice was paid, you received money. And so that's pretty much what we're doing here. And we're saying, Hey, let's get this, uh, this client started. Let's add a money bag emoji. That's what we're all about. Money bag emojis and a similar step right here. So that's the second automation. Let's continue and move on to the workflow number three. And so these first two were for invoice, when an invoice is sent, when an invoice is paid. Now let's look, have a look at the checkout pages, payment pages on an order form, a one-step or a two-step order form. And if we're selling a product, a membership, uh, any, any sort of call, anything like that, that where we might have a checkout page. And that's pretty much what we're gonna look at now with the third and the fourth folder. And again, the first one is pretty much the sale is made and we have like a, a one-step order form and we get re receive the payment immediately or two-step order form and we receive the payment. And the second folder or the folder number four down here is that abandoned cart checkout nurture that I was referring to earlier. So let's look at the first one first and let's see what can we automate once a sale is made on a uh, order form on a landing page. So the trigger would be order form submission and the submission type would be sale. And we would define which funnel or website are we talking about? I do have a little dummy funnel um, and, and website here. It's not gonna be populated because there's no actual um, data in this account. It's just a dummy account pretty much. But once we go here to checkout pages, you can kind of visualize and see what such a checkout page could look like. But pretty much if you've bought anything online from any e-commerce or any site like that, like it could be a simple uh, checkout page like this where it's like, hey, put in your name, uh, your name, uh, email address, your phone number. And then over here would be like your credit card details and you would pay for some sort of product. This is pretty much what a simple checkout page could look like. And once you filled in the custom values on the back end of your account and fill out the onboarding form, then all of this data would populate pretty much with your business's data, your business's name, your address, all that good stuff. But again, this was just a quick little visualization. So once the order form is submitted, that's the trigger at the top. We again want to give it a little wait step and we'll add a system note that the sale was made on this checkout page. We'll add the tag request review or sold if you want to and you want to request a review and we'll remove them from the next automation and next workflow that we'll have a look at in just a second which is again that abandoned cart checkout because once we get the payment we don't got to you know nurture them anymore it's not an abandoned cart anymore and we'll remove them from the long-term sms and email nurture again so very similar you see very similar structure between an invoice 
a payment is made on a landing page and really any sort of payment, like if you're using payment links um, or recurring payments, like it's always very, very similar structures. After that, we'll send an internal app notification to all users that we sold something, uh, click to see what was purchased, or you could, you know, you could add a link here as well. And we'll also send that via SMS. If you want to, we'll add them to the pipeline stage, sold, and we'll send an email for sure, a thank you email to the customer via yeah, email and SMS. Let's have a quick look at the email. And uh, you could hard code just a simple email into here with simple words, or you could use one of these templates. So this is what my template in here looks like. It pretty much uh, is very simple, has a little section down here where you could put your business name, your logo, all that good stuff. And then just saying, hey, we thank you for your purchase uh, from, you know, business name. We're excited to start working with you. Thank you for your trust and your business. And then as uh, we put the receipt and um, the order amount down below as well. So pretty cool, pretty simple. I definitely recommend having a simple template like that for your email. And then we can send an SMS as well that again, we thank them for the purchase. In the settings, let's have a quick look at here. Again, allow re-entry on so they can go through multiple time. And then we wanna have stop on response uh, off so that it doesn't stop once they respond. And we'll go down to the final abandoned cart, checkout nurture sequence or automation. And so basically in here, again, the idea is if you have an order form, often people have a two-step order form where the first step is like name, phone number, email. And the second step is the credit card details and pay here. And so once they fill in that first step, we can actually trigger an automation like this and it's just considered an opt-in. But then if they don't actually end up buying, we wanna nurture them and convince them to, to buy our product because they're a very hot lead. They were about to buy, but they didn't buy. And some a simple abandoned cart nurture sequence like this could increase your sales by 20, 30, 40%. So definitely worth looking into. So the trigger up here would be submission type opt-in. And so depending on if you have a normal order form or if you have a two-step order form, you would have it uh, set up a little bit differently. But the idea is that the submission type is just an opt-in. Uh, you could have a bump sale, um, you could have an upsell or a normal sale. But again, we're choosing simple opt-in on this trigger up here. We're going to give it a little wait, add that system note again that we made uh, or not haven't made a sale yet. But um, and we'll sell an, set an internal app notification saying that, hey, you, somebody is ready to buy. They haven't bought yet, but they're ready to buy. And then we'll give it a wait for 20 minutes. So we'll, we'll basically wait and see if they buy. If they do buy, they'll be removed from this workflow. If they don't buy, this will trigger and we'll, we'll send them something in 20 minutes. And so on automations like this, because this what's following now is a nurture. And again, we're removing them from the nurture once they do buy, but we also want to have stop on response on. So in general, it's always good for nurtures like this to have stop on response on so that they don't receive email five, six, seven once they respond. So that's just a little tip. That's why we have stop on response on right here, allow re-entry on as well. And for any of these workflows, if you only want to send during specific times, you can pretty much always play with this toggle right here and set that for the entire workflow. So let's go back to the builder and let's have a look what happens after the 20 minute wait. That's when we start nurturing them and we're like, hey, I'm reaching out to you, Jeff, uh, from Jeff's HVAC. I noticed that you were interested in our services, but you didn't buy. And this is where we would add a little bit of value and pretty much uh, tell them to, to buy again or to, to finalize the buy. Oh, and so I forgot, we're actually making it pretty cool, a little bit more human, because many people know that it's a workflow, but it seems a little bit more human. Uh, if you send one SMS first, and that's why we're ending the sentence like that there, and then we're just waiting for 10 seconds, or I guess 0 0.1 is more like five or six seconds. And um, then we're gonna send a second SMS and just say, hey, just wanted to see if you have any questions or if there's uh, anything that I can pretty much help with. After that, we'll wait another eight hours. So pretty soon, eight hours is not a long wait. And on these wait steps, you can decide if you wanna send between a certain window, if it's email and SMS, and depending on your state, your country, there might be regulations around sending emails and SMS during certain times. But here we've got a little wait step and we're gonna wait from nine to 5 p.m., only send it on Monday and Fridays. 
And then we're gonna send a simple follow-up SMS. Hey, just wanted to check in here again. Text me if you have any questions about what it is you, you'd like to work with us. And then we're gonna wait 16 minutes and we're going to send them another email and asking them how, if, you, if, they're, <laughs> if they're having second thoughts. Hey, if you're sitting on the fence about whether or not to work with Jeff's HVAC, I wanted to share some experience our customers had in the past uh, working with, and we'll pretty much just send some customer testimonials that are saved within the custom values on the back end. So pretty interesting, cool little uh, abandoned cart nurture sequence, and you could easily duplicate or copy all the actions from here, copy them down at the bottom, and turn this into a nice long-term uh, nurture. But uh, it depends on if you wanna do that within this workflow or if you just wanna add a tag down at the bottom and add them to a long-term nurture. But simple optimizations like this where somebody opts in and we immediately nurture them after 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes of opt-in, that these can really boost your sales and um, a lot of people don't do this. So definitely check this out. If you have some sort of landing page or other page where you make sales and sell products like that, definitely install a abandoned cart nurture sequence like this one. And that's pretty much it for this episode of Automation Unleashed. I showed you how to automate invoices, how to automate checkout payments. And if we go back, that was one of many of these folders. So if you wanna learn more about the other folders, check out the other episodes, uh, depending on what you're looking for, if it's calendar confirmation and reminders, review requests. So definitely look at the other folders, but thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, uh, comment them down below and check out the free resources down below as well. Either way, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day, peace.